Welcome everyone to Feel Good Friday. This is our good news show where we share with you guys some good news from all over the world. So let's turn this around. So this is the MTK website. You can go to mtk.ca, consider donating. Hey, what's up, Stan? What's up, the youth wiggle? All right, so you can go to mtk.ca, click the donate button in the top right, and it will take you to our donation page, all right? Also, check out shapeyourlifeboxing.com, all right? Of course, MDK is partnered with Shape Your Life, so thank you to them. All right, our first story from Riverdale Farm. Riverdale Farm gets, out of the blue, $200,000 donation. Wow. So, I don't think I've ever been to Riverdale Farm, but... All right, so let's see. Animals at the Toronto City-owned Riverdale Farm should be getting some new digs and more thanks to true surprise $200,000 gift from a longtime admirer. Wow. Alrighty, next one from the NHL. Let's take a listen. All that extra COVID cleaning is not just at the hockey arenas. So it's pretty exciting for us. Like I said, we've done it before. But this one's special. We're gonna do a really good job on this one, make sure it shines. While in both Toronto and Edmonton, those competing for the real Stanley Cup started to arrive, away from the prying eyes of hockey-hungry fans. Oh, I'm very excited. The four months off was, was difficult to find things to do and watch. And uh, now with hockey back, it'll be like hockey on steroids. Hockey that's carefully monitored at any rate. Nobody without clearance gets past these fences. We think this is an impenetrable barrier from both sides. People who are in the bubble shouldn't be leaving it, and people who aren't in the bubble shouldn't be coming into it. While local health authorities say player safety is top of mind and plan to do regular COVID tests. Uh, we are having conversations with the NHL uh, and the local Oilers group about how test results are going to be reported. Alrighty, so basically, NHL is back. The two hub cities, Edmonton and Toronto, are hosting 12 NHL teams each. Alright, so next story from a therapy dog, Booker T. Pug. That's funny, Booker T. was a pretty famous WWE wrestler. Booker T. Pug inspires confidence and reading comprehension as therapy dog. Hmm. I uh, need to get myself some therapy dog while I'm reading too. Let's see. All right, tucked inside a plush bean field playhouse in South Salem Elementary School Media Center is everyone's favorite staff member, Mr. Booker T. Pug. It's where he makes a difference in the lives of 900 students every day. Wow, 900 students every day? That's a big elementary school. Alrighty. Interesting. Alright, next story from Toronto. Today, Toronto and Peel region moving into stage three along with the rest of Ontario, except I think Windsor. Windsor is the only region still in stage two. So what does that mean? That means, yes, except for Windsor, yes. So that means, you know, a lot of things are back in business. I know some gyms are back in business and of course the playgrounds and fitness parks are free to use again so a lot of things and of course the indoor limit has been upped from 10 in stage 2 to 50 in stage 3 but you still have to keep a mask on all right next one all right any parents watching just don't 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 watch because I know you're going to compare your kids to this student. All right, TDSB student graduates high school with a 100% average. Wow. Absolutely amazing. All right, so let's take a read. For the first time in years, a student has graduated with an average of 100% from a high school in Toronto under TDSB. And is the only one to do so this year. Uh, Nomi Danze graduated last month with a perfect average score despite uh, trying to a trying time for our students. Wow. Interesting. Bloor College Institute. 100. Wow. Very cool. Very cool achievement, you know. 
All right, moving on to our next story from the NBA. Of course, the NBA season is officially back. It started yesterday. Anyways, NBA announces zero of the 344 players tested in the bubble have tested positive since July 20th. Woo. Good news from the NBA. And of course, the Toronto Raptors season opener or season re resuming their season. They're playing the Lakers tomorrow saturday at i think 6 p.m all right ontario reports 76 new cases of coronavirus the lowest single day increase since march so you know i'm very happy to hear that we're on track to uh you know we're on track going lower and lower so everything is opening up into stage three which is good and hopefully we keep it that way all right so this story went viral last week. Uh, it is not good news, but there's some good news uh, that came from this week. All right. So the original story is Ryan Reynolds offers $5,000 reward for the return of a woman's teddy bear. So what's so special about this teddy bear? All right. Vancouver police even tweeted about it. Have you seen this bear? It was stolen from a backpack yesterday in the West End. It has sentimental value to the owner. All right. And let's see. Okay. So. They said it was stolen from U-Haul late last week. Uh, the custom-made Build-A-Bear has a recorder inside it. The voice of her mother who died last year from cancer at the age of 53. Okay, so this bear has her mother's voice as a recording. Okay, so has a great sentimental value. It went very viral and here is Ryan Reynolds. $5,000 to anyone who returns uh, the bear tomorrow. Nope, zero questions asked. Wow. Stand-up guy Ryan Reynolds and uh, the good news, the bear has been found and returned to the owner, and you know uh, Ryan Reynolds is five thousand uh, dollars poorer now. I mean, I think you know five thousand dollars well spent for Ryan Reynolds. Let's Thanks take a to some high-profile help from Vancouver-born movie star Ryan Reynolds, a missing teddy bear has been returned to a grieving daughter. Here's CTV's Penny Daflos on the recovery of a very special memento. The glasses Against out. all odds, this hug is a reality. I didn't even let him take the bear fully out of the bag. I just snatched it from his arms as soon as I saw her little face. Turned over to Mara Soriano five days after her backpack with the teddy bear was stolen while moving. She'd been devastated because the furry memento had a message from her mother who died last year. <laughs> Soriano combed through alleys and good Samaritans followed helping spread the word. When you miss someone that much, sometimes you need to hear them. And finding help from the most unexpected places. If you have that teddy bear, please return it. That is precious. Celebrities from Kelly Ripa to Dan Levy pitched in after hometown hero Ryan Reynolds offered a $5,000 reward, catapulting the story internationally. I have no idea how this story touched so many people and how it had such a far and wide reach, but we are so grateful for it. And you know, I think it's the good news that everybody really needed to hear. The man who found Mama Bear told Soriano he recognized the suspect in this surveillance video posted by the VPD and stole it back from a tent at the Strathcona Park encampment. Reynolds has paid the reward, which undoubtedly led to this reunion. The bear is my mom. <laughs> Basically, she gave me the bear as a reminder that I'll never be alone. I love you, baby, and beyond. She was amazing. Um, she was the most generous person, the kindest person. Whose enduring love for her daughter and vice versa has us all wearing a smile much like hers. Just Wow. What a great story. And great of Ryan Reynolds to bring light to that story and help it make it go viral and uh, get a happy ending. Very cool. All right, next story. New Toonie features work of Hita artist Bill Reed. All right, let's take a look at these new tunies. Wow. Hey, what's up, Ergen? We got Ergen in Instagram chat. Look at this new tunie. That's intense. Hmm. Might have to get one of these and just keep it as a collector item. Alrighty. We got Ergen wanting to come on live. We'll give him a minute. Oh no, never mind. All right, Ergen, hopefully you're enjoying the show. All right, next story out of 
Ergen. We'll talk about it tomorrow, okay? Anyways. Canada's four biggest airports now check temperatures of domestic passengers. All right, let's see. What airports are these? Okay. Uh, Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, and Montreal. Wait, that's one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's four. Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, Pearson, and Montreal Trudeau International. Hmm. I mean, better late than never, I guess. All right, next one. Google bans ads on coronavirus conspiracy theory content. Hmm, very cool. There's a lot of misinformation going around, so very cool to see uh, there as well. Alrighty, next story out of Waterloo, Ontario. Face shield manufacturer donated 750,000 mats, or sorry, shields. To, uh, for teachers across Canada. Let's take a look. And as school boards look ahead to the start of the school year just weeks away, a Waterloo-based PPE manufacturer is donating 750,000 face shields to teachers across the country. CTV's Tegan Bersolato was at the Canadian Shields Waterloo facility this morning where the province's education minister accepted the donation on behalf of teachers. The donation is valued at about $7.5 million and plans to get a shield in the hands of each educator across Ontario. Now this morning, the Canadian Shield, founded by Inksmith, said they wanted to give back to the school boards that donated parts of the shields to health care workers during the start of the pandemic. It comes at a critical time as schools and teachers prepare to return to classrooms. School boards have been asked to come up with three plans in Waterloo Region, and that includes a remote model, a full return, and a hybrid model that would include a mix of both. During today's news conference, Education Minister Stephen Lecce says those plans are coming later this week. And really building out a health protocol that will ensure that students and staff can return with confidence that there will be new. Alrighty, that's very interesting. I imagine that the teachers are going to be wearing shields when they teach. Hmm. Anyways, next story. All right road closures for active to right so they're closing roads in toronto to help residents you know give residents some space to get active you can run walk bike rollerblade whatever on these open roads so let's take a read at which roads so lakeshore boulevard west from windermere to stadium road lakeshore boulevard east from leslie to woodbine and Bayview from Rosedale to River Street. All right, so they'll be doing this every weekend, including long weekends until September. Hmm. And uh, this weekend is going to be a long weekend, Civic Monday. So it's going to be closed until Monday at 11 p.m. Alrighty, next one from California, Northern California. Uh, a Selen tribe, sorry if I butchered that, uh, regains ancestral land after 250 years. Wow. The tribe purchased the 1,200-acre uh, ranch near Big Sur as part of a $4.5 million deal and will use it for educational and cultural purposes. Hmm. Wow, that looks very scenic. Wow, the property market in California is more affordable than, like, Toronto. 4.5 million is going to get you like two houses in Toronto max. All right, next one. India's tiger population has nearly doubled in 12 years. All right, doubled from what though? All right, last year the premise recorded almost 3,000 tigers, more than double from 1,400 in 2006. Hmm. Interesting. India is home to about 8% of the world's biodiversity, including 70% of the world's tiger po 70% of the world's tiger population. Wow, I did not know that about India. All right, next one. NBA announces no-cost community COVID testing program in Orlando and other teams' markets. All right, so let's take a read. NBA has launched a new community testing program which plans on providing no-cost COVID-19 tests in Orlando, Florida, and other team markets, the league announced. Is COVID testing not free in the States? That's kind of bizarre. 
Otherwise, why would they be doing this? No cost. I mean, it's free here in Canada. I can't imagine why they would charge anyone. But if they are, if the government is uh, charging people in the states, good on the NBA for providing a no cost alternative for COVID testing. Hmm. Interesting. All right, next one. A rescuer I've sailed 130 feet down airless well to save a trapped owl. All right, let's see. Rescuers in northern Germany have managed to save a young eagle owl who was trapped at the bottom of a 130-foot well at a ruined castle. Wow. Police in the town uh, of Bad Sergeberg was were alerted on Saturday afternoon by a local who could hear the bird hooting in distress. Okay. Okay, so rescuers used a spotlight to illuminate the well. You could see the bird at the very at the bottom, but they were unable to lure it into a net. Test showed the air quality was poor just a few minutes into the shaft, so they lowered an oxygen bulb to the, to the well to help the owl breathe. Then a rescuer wearing a breathing apparatus upsailed down the well, packed the young animal into a bag, and sent it back up the rope before following themselves. The rescue option took 3.5 hours. And the owl has since been given to a local sanctuary. Bat, wait, bat sanctuary. Okay, interesting. 3.5 hours to go 100. Very safe than sorry, I guess. California's only known grave wolf pack has eight new pups, giving hope to the future of the species. Only one pack of gray wolf in California? Hmm. I mean, that's still better than zero. These, wow, that's very cute. They kind of look like dogs hmm. anyways california's only wolf pup wolf family the last pack has produced its fourth litter of pups the pups uh father joined the pack recently after the pack's first breeding male disappeared last summer wow all right another animal story rare blue lobster is saved by red lobster employee and sent to zoo hmm. a lobster named claude is living to see another day. Claude, the female lobster with a rare blue shell, was recently delivered to an Ohio red lobster restaurant, but she escaped her buttery fate finding a new home at the Akron Zoo. Hmm. Akron, Ohio, nice. So discovering a blue lobster is incredibly rare. The genetic anomaly that causes their shells to be blue instead of red occurs once in every two million lobsters. Hmm. And it is transferred to a zoo. Nice. All right. Canadian lineman Laurent Devenier Tardif opts out of NFL season to lines. So uh, part of the Kansas City defending Super Bowl champion. All right. So the 29-year-old from Mont Saint Hilaire, Quebec became the first player to up out of the upcoming NFL season due to COVID-19 pandemic Friday. Kansas City's uh, starting right guard earned a medical degree from McGill and has been working to fulfill his requirements to become a doctor in the offseason. Wow. Incredible work. Good on him. All right. Next one. Taiwan police use Animal Crossing to return lost Nintendo Switch. Hmm. All right. Let's take a read. How did they do it? So police in Taiwan found a creative way of getting a lost Nintendo Switch console to its owner by using the Animal Crossing, the game Animal Crossing New Horizons. All right, Animal Crossing incredibly popular, recently released, I think in March. All right, so let's see. The handheld console was handed into local police station in Taipei with no information about its owners attached. But because it had Animal Crossing on it. Officers were able to send a mass message to owner's friends. The police department wrote on Facebook. The owner was then reunited with his with the device. Local media reports, according to ta Taiwanese outlet CTS, the owner, named as Mr. Zhang, had kept the switch on top of an ATM when he was getting out cash and forgot to take it with him when he left. Wow, very cool. Alrighty. All right, next story. Uh, landlord lets family who can't pay rent 
date. All right, let's take a let's take a read. All right, so let's take a watch. Courts reopen. A huge surge in evictions is expected. When the landlord came knocking on the West Side family's door, they feared the worst. But as Tessa Dutero shows us now, what happened next was an unexpected gift. Ten weeks ago, Wes Moberly was laid off from his IT job. He hasn't had a paycheck since. I'm worrying about like borrowing money from people to get my phone line turned back on, worrying about like when my internet's going to get disconnected because then I can't, you know, I can't even do freelance work or if I get a job, I won't be able to do that. Wes and his fiance used up their savings to provide for twin five-year-old daughters, Lana and Lily. You know, make sure that they have food to eat, a place to live and clothes to wear. Soon, Wes couldn't afford to pay rent to his landlord, Ellery Lewis. They always pay their rent on time. Uh, they paid in May and then uh, June came and then July and I had not heard from them. Instead of an eviction notice, Lewis decided to help them out. He has two daughters. I happen to have two daughters as well, so I put myself in his shoes. And if I was in, sh in his shoes, I would want someone to do the same for me. He let them stay in the house and gave them money right out of his pocket. Yeah, he gave us $100 because I told him, like, our phone line had been turned off and we had zero dollars left at that point. The other big thing was like, do we have a place to live? And now that we don't have to worry about that for the time being, like that's just a mountain of stress off of my shoulders. Many of Lewis's tenants can't make the rent right now. And today the county announced a program to help them pay. With the moratorium on evictions for renters living in. Wow, what an upstanding landlord. I know there are a lot of heartless landlord out there that would just say evict and they don't care. But, uh, wow. Good on the landlord for paying it forward and helping, you know, those less fortunate. I think uh, one day if I am in a good position that I can help others as well. All right, next story from the Seattle Kraken, the newest NHL team that we reported about. All right, they are going to Invest 100% of the net proceeds into the community, partnering with youth care to end youth homelessness, along with other nonprofits serving uh, underserved Black, Indigenous, and people of color in the greater, greater Seattle region. So, 100% of the net proceeds from their apparel line is going to that. Very cool. Still can't get over the name Kraken. Hmm. I mean, it doesn't really seem like a sports name name all right next story lottery winner stuns friends with sharing prize all right let's see tom cook honors pact made with his friend josephini in 1992 the pair splits 16.7 million powerball jackpot winnings wow a western concert man will share his millions in lottery winnings with a longtime friend because they made a promise because of a promise they made to each other nearly three decades ago wait was 1992 already three decades hmm I guess it is. All right, friends, Tom Cook and Joseph Feeney shook hands in 1992 and promised that if either of them won the Powerball jackpot, they would split the money. So that promise came to fruition last month when Cook bought the winning ticket for the $22 million jackpot in Synergy Co-op in Men Menomi. All right. When Cook gave the call to his friends, uh, the good news, Feeney couldn't quite believe it. Wow, that's funny. And good on him for being a good friend and uh, keeping the promise. All right, next one. Officials crack down on Alaska border, Alaska bound travelers crossing U.S. Canada border. All right, so, you know, this uh, it's been a little bit of a big story last month. Uh, reported that a lot of Americans are touristing uh, BC and Alberta. Right, they're going through the states, going through BC and Alberta, saying that they're going to drive to Alaska, right? Because there's no straight land border from the states to Alaska. So they're going to have to cut through Canada. But they're just, you know, kind of like vacationing in Canada and everyone's getting upset over it. You know, the border should be closed, but hopefully it's good that they're going to crack down on these Alaskan bound travelers. All right. As a part of Stage 3, Cineplex is getting the go-ahead to open, and they are going to open 25 select theaters across Ontario tomorrow. So their reopening plans designed with health and safety of employees and guests as first priority, welcoming guests back to the big screen with five 
dollar tickets. Wow, that's pretty cheap. Uh, all right, so let's take a read. Okay, so uh, launching received seat seating in all auditoriums across Canada. Seating options will be automatically blocked off to ensure proper distance in every direction between guests. Okay. Reduce capacity in all auditoriums allow for physical distancing. Yep. Enhance cleaning pr uh, practices throughout all its facilities and particularly focused on high contact services, restrooms, and seats. Accepting debit and credit payment only with exception of gift card purchases. Limiting food offerings. All right, people eat at theaters. I mean, that means they're going to take their mask off. Limiting food offerings at the rec room. Ensuring uh, employees have protective press. Again, hand sanitizer available. Okay, keeping VIP cinemas and play structures in clubhouse auditoriums closed. Uh, in communities where it's mandated, cineplex requiring guests to wear a mask inside the theater. I don't see why not. I mean, you're just sitting there watching a movie. How hard can wearing a mask be? All right, so let's see. Which theaters? Any in Toronto? Toronto. Uh, cineplex Empress Walk, Cineplex Mississauga, Cineplex Queensway and VIP. Young in Eglinton, Young in Dundas. Wow, that's pretty close. Yorkdale. Odeon and Eglinton Town Center and the rec room. Hmm. Very interesting. We'll see how that progresses. All right, next. TD and RBC, all right? Two big banks in Canada extend work from home policy for most staff until 2021. Wow. So Royal Bank of Canada and TD Group uh, says most of the staff will work from home until next year to further stop the spread of COVID-19. Yep. That is pretty good news, you know, if you can work from home, you know, then, you know, might as well, instead of getting all cramped in an office space. All right, next one, New Zealand. This is the New Zealand Prime Minister. New Zealand passes substantial bill to help ensure pay equity between men and women. All right, pay discrimination based on gender is something uh, for the history books. Let's see, the parliamentary unanimously passed an equal pay Amendment bill that ensures workers are not paid less because of their gender. Very cool. All right, next one. Divers pull Paralympic hopefuls prosthetic leg from the ocean floor off Long Beach. Wow, well, here it is. That is funny. Uh, I didn't know you can go swimming with prosthetic. But I guess he lost it when he was swimming. Prosthetic. Okay, let's see. He lost his leg while paddleboarding. Okay, paddleboarding in Long Beach and the fire department dove right in to retrieve it for him. Wow, very cool. All right, last story of today. Big one from Lowe's. All right, the hardware store. Shelling out $100 million in coronavirus bonuses to hourly workers. Wow. Okay, so let's take a read. Uh, on August 21, full-time hourly associates uh, will receive $300 and a part-time and seasonal associates will receive $150. The August bonus will match the funds previously provided to hourly associates in March and May as well as earlier this month, the company announced. Lowe said the total amount is spending this round of bonuses is $100 million, pushing its total investment in coronavirus relief funding for associates to approximately $500 million. Wow. I didn't know Lowe's was giving bonuses every month, March and May and this month and August. Wow, good on Lowe's. If I ever need any hardware, uh, you know, needs, I will be sure to purchase from Lowe's. All right, that concludes our episode for today. All right, but before we go, if you are a youth and you're going through some uh, mental health difficulties, please consider going to Kids Health Phone. You can go to their website, kidshealthphone.ca. You can text them, phone them, live chat them, all right? You can also, of course, Google them. All right, this next uh, mental health uh, support tool is not age specific, so it is for youth and adults alike. You can go to Wellness Together Canada, you can Google that, or type in ca.portal.gs. All right, they have resources for adults and youth. All right, that is it for today. Thank you all for joining me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the good news and we will see you all next time.